for the lives of the army. Malcolm is still talking on the ground to the press because Malcolm had made up in his own mind he was going to leave the nation. So this is December. By February we had Savior's Day. This is the first time since Malcolm is in the nation that he missed the Savior's Day. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad allowed me in 1964 to bring him on to be the speaker that introduced him. In March, before the 90 days of his suspension was up, Malcolm went before the world and said he is leaving the nation of Islam because he felt he could help the messenger better outside of the nation than inside the nation. Now you all may love Malcolm. No, I have no problem with that. But when you have organization, there is no individual more important than organization or nation. Individuals sacrifice their lives for organization and for nation. So no matter how much we love Malcolm, when Malcolm is wrong and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad disciplines him, that is to strengthen organization. And if Malcolm loved organization and nation more than his own pain, Malcolm would have submitted because Malcolm was wrong. But Malcolm was angry and Malcolm was bitter and Malcolm was hurt. He went to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad prior to his announcing that he would leave and he questioned Elijah Muhammad about whether this was true that he had fathered these children and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad didn't deny it, he said yes. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad told him, hey brother, I am fulfilling what is written of me in the scriptures. Malcolm knew the scriptures. He knew that Elijah Muhammad believed he is the messenger of this Quran. And as the messenger of this Quran, he had the right by God's order to take wives, whether his wife liked it, whether you liked it, whether I liked it, it don't make no difference. If God orders it, he carries it out. Now look at the wisdom of God. I'm just about finished now. Malcolm went out of the nation. We all were hurt. At least I can speak for myself. I loved him. Next to Elijah Muhammad, I didn't know anybody greater than Malcolm X. It hurt me that he would go out of the nation. But then the worst hurt was Malcolm going to Mike Wallace telling Mike Wallace and listen to the words now Elijah Muhammad fathered children from his teenage secretaries so Malcolm raised it to a moral issue listen to me carefully putting himself in the righteous position putting his teacher in an immoral position but then he's going to the white man to tell the white man what his leader and teacher had done he did it with Mike Wallace you can't deny this this is actual fact he came here to Chicago and went to cups in there when he had cups in there then a fool the black people and he told Cup I thought he was a man. Father, these children and wouldn't, and I was kept it a secret and whatnot. I found that that he was less man than I thought. Oh. He dogged the message. The man that took him from a pimp, from a hustler, from a stick-up man, 
ascending before the world. Now he's dogging his teaching. What do you think we felt? Elijah Muhammad wasn't just a leader. That's our spiritual guide and father, but you don't have to order me to kill you. If you attack my father, my orders come from my love. I want you to hear me good because every Muslim that loved Elijah Muhammad would have killed Malcolm if we had gotten a chance. No, I don't need no damn applause. I want you to think now. We didn't incite that. Malcolm incited that in us. He would have been dead. He would never have lasted a year. Elijah Muhammad told us, leave him alone. Leave him alone. Told me to my face, leave him alone. Elijah Muhammad enough that if you attack him, I will kill you. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And I'm not a killer. But neither are you. But if somebody attack what you love, each one of you in here would become a killer instantaneously. Am I lying? Never let somebody look like they're attacking your child. Here's a woman who fought a bear because the bear snatched her baby. And she ran the bear down screaming until the bear dropped her baby. Love casts out fear. We don't give a damn about no white man law when you attack what we love. And frankly, it ain't none of your business. What did you got to say about it? Did you teach Malcolm? Did you make Malcolm? Did you clean up Malcolm? Did you put Malcolm out before the world? Was Malcolm your traitor or was he out? And if we dealt with him like a nation deals with a traitor, what the hell business is it of yours? Shut your mouth and stay out of it. Because in the future, we're going to become a nation. And the nation got to be able to deal with traitors and cutthroats and turncoats. The white man does deals with his. The Jews deal with theirs. Salman Rushdie wrote a nasty thing about the prophet and Imam Khomeini put out a death thing on him and it stands today. The sudden path you don't cross. Like I said last week, in every prophet's community, there was zealous. I'm telling you, Elijah Muhammad told us, leave that man alone. I believe Elijah Muhammad said he'll come back repentant, leave him alone. At the same time that Malcolm went out, Wallace B. Muhammad went out too. And wrote in the Daily News, Chicago Daily News, and Sepia Magazine, such ugly things about his father. And if it were not for the mercy of that father, that son would be dead, killed by one of his own brothers. But Elijah Muhammad said, leave him alone. Malcolm was his son. Aaron, yes, but leave him alone. You're not to judge him. Leave him alone. And we left him alone. 
I'm going to tell you something about the nation. The nation that I love. Some of these rotten ministers and leaders and captains. And we were in the nation yesterday and some are in the nation today. You don't like the way of God. If God said put them out in your heart, you want them. You, you don't think that's strong enough, so you want to beat somebody up, or you want to exact some kind of retribution on somebody as though you are God beside God. You don't like my way because I'm a merciful man. Some of you are hypocrites right now. Honorable Elijah Muhammad didn't send me to beat black people or shoot black people, but to teach black people. And you always find me defending black people because he showed me how to defend my people. But you know, sisters and brothers, in the Bible, David had a son called Absalom. And Absalom rose up against his father David violated David's lives in the presence of all of Israel and made war on the father. And when the father's forces went out to meet the forces of the son, David told Joab, when you catch my son, don't kill him. Bring my son to me. Absalom had long hair according to the Bible and he was caught up in a tree and Joab even though the king said leave him alone Joab wanted to be a law unto himself he allowed his emotion and his hatred for what that son had done to take control and he spared Absalom through and they brought the son of David back dead. And while all of Israel was rejoicing, you could hear David in his tent crying, saying over and over and over again, my son, my son, my son. I had an experience with this. Have any of you ever had an out-of-the-body experience? 